Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Red Lizzo Sports Talk. And we are talking about episode 40. So we back. Red Lizzo Sports Talk. Episode 40. Getting it in. We're going to start off with our local local love alerts. Of course, 5 4 Choppa. Always giving you love. Uh, got my intro beat on my YouTube channel. Check out his stuff on SoundClouds. We got our Drew Goes Live. I'm on his show a lot. He's giving me some pointers. He's going to be on mine. We're going to do some things. Um, he's got his show on Twitch with his boy Mills. My boys Jay Holly and Prime. They're from Queens doing their thing. Yo, you got to check out their, their music, man. It's crazy. It's old school, new school, mixed rap. Um, you got to hear Houdini. I'm telling you. If you ain't heard it, look it up on YouTube now. Houdini. Jay Holly and Prime. Two brothers from Queens, tearing it up. Today's episode, we're going to talk about Coach K. He said it's over. He's ending it. Last year. Um, who pulls the trigger on Julio Jones? The AFC East ramifications for the QBs. It's a big year for the AFC East QBs. And then, which number one pick is going gonna, is gonna to shine the brightest this year in fantasy? In our fantasy, uh, in our fantasy focus segment. And of course, of course, we got to talk about the NBA playoffs and the storylines. I know everybody's going to give it to me about my leg show. Yeah, that's the championship ring, you know what I'm saying? But I know they're going to give it to me, but you know, it's, it's like I already said, you know what I'm saying? But we'll get to that, we'll get to that. Uh, but today in sports, today in sports, Babe Ruth retired as a player at the age of 40. And that just, you know, from one, one great to a next, Coach K says it's over. He's going to retire after this coming year. Um, and as somebody that hates Coach K <laughs> and Duke basketball, well, really, I hate Duke basketball because of what Coach K's done, the greatness of Coach K. You know what I'm saying? The greatness of him makes makes you like that. Duke basketball, you either love it or you hate it. And that's because of Coach K. He instilled that. You know what I mean? That's how great he was. You know you're great when you eat, when you have people that either hate you or they love you. If they think you're irrelevant, then you ain't doing a good enough job. Coach K definitely made me not like him. I mean, with the help of Christian Leitner, but um, that's crazy. You know, he's got five championships, 15 ACC tournament championship wins, 12 Final Fours. I mean, he was the face of USA Basketball. You know what I'm saying? And when you're USA Basketball, you're with the greatest. You know what I'm saying? You're with the greatest players. Um, everybody have respect for him. Of course, my boy Kobe he said if he would have went to college, he would have went and played with Coach K. LeBron tried to get Coach K to come to um, Cleveland when he was there. You know what I mean? LeBron loved him too. I mean, so words can't express the knowledge and everything that Coach K has done for the game of basketball. It's crazy. John Shire, I don't know if anybody knows, remembers John Shire. He played point guard for them. You know, it seems like Coach K always had them guards that became assistant coaches. Just because they couldn't make it in the NBA doesn't mean they didn't have that mind. He instilled that mind. He his point guards always coaches off the court, like Jay Will always talked about. But um, we'll see what he does. I mean, the program is built. All you got to do is just not make it go down, John Shire. But you look at Wojo. Remember Wojo? He used to smack the floor all the time. A little short dude. Heck of a coach right now, doing things. Johnny Dawkins. Look what he's been doing. You know what I'm saying? And and my, in my opinion, Jay Billis. I think Jay Billis should be ahead of the NCAA. I think his knowledge is second to none out there. Uh, when he's talking the game, when he's talking about the way things should be run, I think Jay Billis is very underrated. He should be looked upon as some kind of role of something, to do something in there because I think that his mind is built for that. And, you know, Coach K, Coach K, I'm telling you. So he will be missed um, as a Duke not lover. I won't miss him like that. <laughs> as a person that loves the game and loves the sport, yeah, we you miss you when a when a great one leaves, you miss the great ones when they leave. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. Um, we'll see. Recruits are still gonna go to Duke because he built Duke. He built Duke, so they're still gonna go. Um, so we'll see what college basketball does. College basketball is always gonna be college basketball, March Madness, whatever. Um, but let's let's get off that right now. Let's focus on some people that's ready to play. Let's talk about somebody that wants to win. Somebody said, I want to be out of here, and I want to win. That's why I'm not going to the Cowboys. Julio Jones. He's still out there. They said he won a first-round pick. Now I'm hearing that you might be stealing for a second-round pick because, because of his contract, of course. 
So I got five teams that I think are primed to get him. Five teams. First one, Seattle. Seattle's been in the news. Russell Wilson's already talked about. He's already had conversations. Russell Wilson, Russell Wilson wants to win, and I appreciate that. But really, the ownership of Seattle, if Russell Wilson wants him, and we see what Aaron, what's happening with Aaron Rodgers, if Russell Wilson wants him, the owner, y'all might want to do something to try to bring him in. I'm just saying because Russell Wilson at first was talking about, trade me, send me to Chicago, send me somewhere else. I want to be gone. So if Russell Wilson is talking about, hey, I want to play with Julio Jones, and that means in Seattle, Seattle, y'all better take a, take a good look at it. I know you played Tyler Lockett all this money, but you see what the NFL can do real quick. <laughs> you know what I mean? They, they might guarantee you some, but the rest of it ain't guaranteed. That's the thing about football. So I don't know. I think Seattle should take a hard look at that to keep your quarterback happy. If you keep your quarterback happy, do it. We've seen these quarterbacks out here demanding to leave, demanding to do this, demanding to do that. You know, so, hey, I think it's hey, and him and Metcalf. I was, ooh, make Russell Wilson happy. Russell Wilson can elude. He can elude. His offensive line still sucks. But Julio can shake off somebody. You can elude one like, big place. So I think Seattle's a, a big opportunity there. A lot of people keep talking about the Patriots. And I'm like, and I can see, and I can see why because they have the money, they got the cachet, they built up, they spent the most money in history on their team. You know what I mean? They got two stud tight ends now. You know they got some, you know they got some decent wide receivers, Nelson Aguilar and stuff like that. You know what I mean? But, but who's your quarterback? You got Cam Newton, and if Cam's Cam, Julio, that that could be so. But if Cam ain't, then you relying on Matt. Mac Jones, the rookie, to do it. And can Julio wait that long for Mac to be ready? I don't know. It's intriguing. I like to see it. I could see that because I like the Patriots. Um, I know Brandon don't want to see that. <laughs> you know, Brandon don't want to see none of that. He's already mad about what the Patriots are doing now. But Buffalo, Buffalo don't look like they're slowing down no time soon. But if Julio goes to the Patriots, with already with all the weapons they got, and don't forget all those defensive players that sat out last year for the COVID. They coming back. Don't let Cam get a full, a full preseason and all this stuff getting ready in a full camp. Don't sleep on the Patriots. I'm telling you, that's without Julio. So imagine if they get Julio. Whatever. My team in the NFC that I keep saying is my team that I think is going to go to the Super Bowl. I think they're going to the Super Bowl, and I know Tampa Bay's the favorite. And I know Tampa Bay's this. And I know Tampa Bay's that. But eventually, Tom Brady's got to slow down. Eventually, he's got to slow down. I mean, and I like Tom Brady. Don't get me wrong. You know what I'm saying? But I think the Rams are poised. I think the Rams team is poised. Their defense is poised. Um, when you got Jalen Ramsey out there, and you know you're saying, in their defensive line that they got right there, oh, I think they're still, if Matthew Stafford is a significant upgrade over golf. I don't care what nobody says. Stafford is very underrated, I think. I think he's never had a team in Detroit. It's kind of like Barry Sanders, you know what I'm saying? You're a star, but you, what you going to do? I'm not saying Matthew Stafford's the equivalent of Barry Sanders. No, I'm not. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have spoke those words. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. You done got rid of all his weapons. All his weapons are gone. So good thing now he out here with Robert Woods. You know, he's got playmakers out there. And then you give him a Julio Jones. I'd like to see it. I'd like to see it, especially in that division. I think that division's going to be whoa, 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 whoa. And it's going to be fantasy whoa, 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 whoa. It's going to be crazy. And the next one I'm going to talk about is Carson Wentz. He ain't with them Eagles no more. He ain't with the Beagles. You know what I'm saying? He's got a real team with him this time. He's with the Colts with an offensive line, running game, offensive weapons. You give him Julio Jones in that division that you should win anyway. You know what I mean? You should win that division anyway. You will need Julio Jones or somebody like that to compete because, yeah, I got them. I got them like third in the AFC. But you got to compete with Cleveland, and you got to compete with Patrick Mahomes. You got to put up points against Kansas City. They're gonna score. Kansas City's gonna score. So Julio Jones with them, I like it. I like it with the Colts. So any of them four teams would change their season. It would change their season. This last one is the Ravens. I think the Ravens are one of those teams that's 
they're on the cusp of a lot of things. I think they had their, I think they peaked too fast, really, um, with, with Lamar Jackson. You know, I think they peaked so fast, and now they think that they're they're okay. Like we're okay. Look what we already did with nothing. You got to give him something. If you give him Julio Jones, give him Julio Jones. That's gonna change the dynamic of that team because everybody raised right now is ready to stop the run. We just want to stop the run, you know, and stop Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson is so crafty, kind of like I was talking about Russell Wilson's, you know, running around, whatever. Lamar Jackson, you already scared of him running. You scared of him running. You know what I mean? You scared of Russell Wilson running too. But you fear, you fear Lamar Jackson running. And then you got to worry about Julio Jones too? I think that's big time situations. Big time situations. Some one of them, one of them five teams need to pull the trigger and it will change their year. I think that all five of them probably need to make this trade to make it to the Super Bowl. I wouldn't pick any of them except maybe the Rams to make the Super Bowl if they don't get Julio Jones. I just don't. I just think he's that significant for those five teams. So, you know, when we talk about the AFC East, we talk about the quarterbacks in the AFC East. We know with Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow's a rookie, so hey, you know what I'm saying. You let A.J. Green go because you think you got young studs. You got young stud receivers to go with your young stud quarterback. I think he's in the, in the best situation because he really ain't got nothing to prove. He already showed, he showcased last year throwing the ball so much. Throwing the ball so much. And with Joe Mixon, Joe Mixon's better come to, come to play to help him out this year. But I think Joe Burrow's fine. But when you look at the other three quarterbacks in that division, Big Ben, it's your swan song. You already took, you already took money back. You gave money back because you already know. But this is the Pittsburgh Steelers. This is Mike Tomlin. This is Pittsburgh's organization. Slow down, Keith. Slow down. Slow down. I'm not picking the new the division or nothing. I'm just talking about the quarterback. I know Big Ben's talking about he want to do this, he want to do that. If you don't show something this year, Big Ben, this could be your last year, Big Ben. I'm just saying. He's got to come through this year because – you got Juju coming back for a year. You got these other weapons and whatnot. What, what you got a rookie running back. I'm just saying, you've got to come through this year. You got to be healthy and come through. Because you're already looking old. You're looking beat up a little bit. They're giving you an opportunity to showcase that you can still do it. If you don't do it this year, Ben, I don't know, buddy. It's not going to look good. And then we, we talked about Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson. You're trying to get a big contract. You're trying to get this gigantic contract. And I know this, I know your team and your organization. Your organization needs to get you more players. And if they think Hollywood Brown at receiver and, and getting Sammy Watkins from the Chiefs is the upgrade. Sammy Watkins out here in the news talking about today. Yeah, we think we're ready right now to win the Super Bowl. Sammy Watkins. You can't even stay healthy. Homie. You got to get him something else. Ravens, you have to get him something else. I mean, I don't know. I, this year, I think it's big for him. This And the last quarterback in that division is Baker. He wants big money, too. Do you pay them big money? Do you pay Lamar Jackson and Baker Mayfield money if they don't show something this year? I mean, how much more talent do you got to put around Baker Mayfield? Baker Mayfield got all the talent in the world around him. If he don't come through this year, now don't get me wrong, last year I think that the team did good. And, you know, they they they, they fought Kansas City. They fought Kansas City. But I think this year I, expectations are even higher now. You know what I'm saying? You want this big time money? You got to do it. You got to do it. Lamar Jackson, you got to do it. You should be out there throwing the ball every second of your life right now, getting accurate, <laughs> you know, doing these things. Big Ben, you got to do it. Or else this division next year could be all crazy with new quarterbacks. It could be crazy what could happen. So we'll see what happens with that. And our, so, But like I said, in our fantasy focus, we're going to talk about some of these quarterbacks. So we said, which number one pick from the quarterbacks is going to have the best year? So I pulled out four of them. We talked about Baker. We talked about Joe Burrow. Kyler Murray. Or Matthew Stafford. Which one of those four? 
is going to have the best year for fantasy. I mean, when we look at it, Baker Mayfield, I think he's probably going to be number four out of those. And not saying nothing bad about him, but I think they like to run the ball. You got Nick Chubb and you got Kareem Hunt. You know what I'm saying? I know you got some shiny toys on the outside with Odell and Landry and all that, but I think they want to run the ball first. And mobility-wise, he don't have the wheels like Kyler Murray. He got more than Matthew Stafford, but <laughs> you know what I mean? So I put Baker fourth in that category. This next one's tough for me because this next one's tough. But I'm going to probably put Joe Burrow third. Only because he performed so well throwing the ball last year that I think teams are going to have a book on him a little bit. And I don't know how good that offensive line is. I don't know if they addressed it enough. And like I said, Joe Mixon, what you going to do? Are you going to beat a bell cow? Are you going to showcase? Because Gio Bernard's gone. Gio Bernard's gone. So Joe Mixon's got to show up and help. So I have to put Joe Burrow third. It's close third. It's a close third. But I'm going to put Matthew Stafford second. I think Stafford has always put up numbers with limited options, limited weapons, limited help everywhere, you know. I think he's going to the Rams where they can give him a lot of stuff. And I think Sean McVay, I think he's gonna I think he's gonna light up people. I think he wants to light up people. I think he wanted to light up people with golf, but golf just couldn't do it. You saw what he did in the Super Bowl against New England. Couldn't even score no points, man. You can't score no points. None. You make the Super Bowl, you can't score nothing. You can't get no touchdowns or nothing, man. Come on. Back to Stafford with them weapons. Yeah. I, I'm gonna put him too. And I gotta put my boy Kyler Murray. Yeah, I got to put Kyler Murray number one. Yeah, I'm biased. You know, I like the Cardinals. You know what I'm saying? Because if my Washington football team, I don't know. I, I told I told my wife, I said, I'm a Cardinals fan now. I'm, I'm replacing the Washington team. I'm a Cardinals fan. But I like Kyler Murray. And you add an A.J. Green to go with who? We'll go with Nuke and go with James Cummings. I, I think Kyler Murray is going to be the one, in my opinion. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Let me know. Send it out because I want to see what y'all think of how, how I how I rank those. So Kyler Murray, one. Matthew Stafford, two. Joe Burrow, three. Baker Mayfield, four. So I think it's going to be like that. All right, all right. I prolonged it long enough. I know, I know. We're going to talk about these NBA playoffs. All right. So we, we talked about my Lakers, and I talked about this from the beginning. I said, if we healthy, we're going to win. If we ain't healthy, we can lose in the first round. And here we go. Uh, when we played the Suns, game two, Chris Paul got hurt. I remember being on the show and I said, I don't want that to happen. I feel bad for Chris Paul. I like Chris Paul. But it always seems like he got hit with the injury bug at the wrong time. Or a chance that he had a chance to actually win. And lo and behold, I don't know what happened. The basketball guys just switched everything. We done got an injury switch. Chris Paul done miraculously got healthy. And the Lakers miraculous got hurt. Call up Hope got hurt. He's out. AD got hurt. LeBron's hurt. Everybody hurt. Everybody hurt. And so maybe this maybe this clouds are opening up for Chris Paul. Because I tell you what, in this series, Lakers Suns, the winner of this series, I want to win the West, in my opinion. I'm not saying they're going to. I'm not saying they're going to. But in my rooting interest, I want the winner of this series to win the West. Um and and <laughs> I'm kind of torn because last night was a game that I put on the map because, yes, I'm a Kobe lover. LeBron has always had to – he's always had to do more for me, more to me. Always. Look, the dogs are barking. Look, all the haters, all the haters are barking now. All the haters are bring up LeBron. They barking, they barking. But um, I feel like LeBron was always built to do so much more. Now AD was out. Two to two. Two to two. What you gonna do? You on the road. He said, my shoulders are built for this. My shoulders are built for this. Your shoulders are built to get beat by 30. You were down by 30 the whole, the whole damn game. You were down by 30 the whole game. I was, I was, I wasn't even watching. I told my wife, I was looking at it, I said, yo, we down by 30 in the first quarter. Second quarter, same thing. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. I'm not putting it all on him, but I'm, I'm just saying. You're supposed to be this dude. You're supposed to impose your will. You're supposed to be the one to make everybody better. Now, granted, people got to make shots, but 
I watched the game. You wasn't doing, you wasn't going hard. You wasn't going nowhere. And I will be fair. Why well, go hard when you're down 30 when you already injury too? Trying to come back healthy for game six. And that's fine. And that's fine. But it's just one of them things that I always say, man. I always say, if you don't have all that extra help, he can't do it. Like Chris Bosch on the radio talking about, oh, oh, other people have to help, you know. And Miami, we had to, yeah, Miami, you had Chris Bosch, Dwayne Wade, Gary Payton, all these. I don't want to hear all these people he had. Come on. Don't want to hear it. Stop making excuses. You don't get me by 30. It's game five, two to two. You don't get beat by 30. You demand your team not to get beat by 30. I don't want to hear that no more. And if they lose the next game, oh, well, you ain't getting another ring to catch Kobe. That's fine. Fine by me. I don't care. Don't care. I need Anthony Davis to be healthy. So if he's not going to be healthy in game six, don't play him. We need him for the future. We need him for the future. Because you want to know who I need on my team? Because LeBron's old. He's going to be gone. You know who I need? I need that boy Dane from Portland. You want to know why I need him? Because he's a killer. And Dane wins my Pharrell Award. Actually, he don't win the award. This goes to the Portland Trailblazers organization and team. Y'all get my Pharrell Award. That boy Dane scored 50 points, 10 assists, 10 threes, 12 of 17 from threes. Had two deadly threes to send it in, to either tie or whatever, to put it in double overtime. And y'all still lose? And you still lose? What more has he got to do? What more has Dame got to do? And all the time. This ain't the first time. Dame's always doing this. He's always doing this. But y'all can't put a team around him for nothing? Why? Why? It's ridiculous. You're wasting his talent. You're wasting it, Portland. What are we doing? Come on over to L.A. Come play with a Anthony Davis, Dane. Come play with Anthony Davis. You ain't got to be doing all this. You ain't got to be doing all that and losing. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous the way the Portland Trailblazers are. The Portland Trailblazers make me sick for the way they're doing da Damian Lillard, not getting any help around him. You go out and get you a superstar, a, somebody a swing or something to get in there, get in there, get him. Or else he should leave. Leave. Come to us. Come to us. So, yeah, dang. Like I said, they lost. Now they're down 3-2. And can they win the next two games? Possibly. But, I mean, Dame's a, how much, what much more Dame's got to do? C.J. McCollum. C.J. McCollum's a decent player. Don't get me wrong. But I would try to put, put a package together. Trade Nurich, Nurich or whatever his name is and, and McCollum and whatever else. Try to go get a name. Try to go get somebody that's a swing, that's a star, that could be something. We need they need something to help Damian Lillard. It's ridiculous. So Denver, Denver's gonna be right there. Da, 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 da. The funniest thing, when Damian Lillard finally missed that one shot when the game was about to be over, you see Austin Rivers. He was just like, Thank God. If you ain't seen it, yo, check it out on YouTube, yo. It was ridiculous. He's like, Thank God. Because you expect him to make it. You know who else? You used to shoot the ball like that and you thought you expected him to make it? It's the same gene. I'm just saying. Come on home. Come to L.A., baby. Come to L.A. Uh, 76ers, they're going to finish Washington tonight. That's over. That's a wash. Um, done. That's another one. Russell Westbrook, Bradley Beal. Y'all can do that there. Come on over to L.A. Come on over to L.A. Give it to LeBron. Let's get somebody with A.D. But the question is, Joel Embiid ain't going to play tonight. Here we go with the injuries again. Here we go with the injuries. Ben Simmons ain't ready for that. Ben Simmons is not ready to control the team. He's limited on certain things he can do. Yeah, he tries to say he's the best defender in the basketball. I don't see that. I mean, I think he is, but I think he's a good defensive player. But he's not an alpha like Joel Embiid. But Joel Embiid can't stay healthy. Joel Embiid can't stay healthy. Um, the Grizzlies, Jazz. The Grizzlies, man, super fight by the Grizzlies. I can't wait to see the rest of their, as their, as their years go on and on. If they can get another piece to go with Ja, they're going to be something fun to watch. Um, the Jazz, I think they're done with them. They're, they're going to finish them off. Hawks and Knicks. <laughs> Trey Young is cold. 
Trey Young is cold. Ice Trey. Ice Trey. He's going to finish it in Madison Square Garden tonight. He's going to be like, it's quiet as fuck here. I wouldn't doubt it. I can't see it. Julius Randle, fraud. Julius Randle, you are what I thought you were when you were in L.A. You were on a bad team for the Knicks. You had a you had a good year. You made them false hope, false hope. But you are what I thought you were in L.A. You are what I thought you were. Just saying. We got old broken up Derrick Rose out here starring, doing everything. And I love some Derrick Rose. I love some Derrick Rose. Talk about injuries. If he didn't get hurt. He was that dude. He was that dude. And I was an Iverson fan. He reminded me so much of him. Like certain aspects of it. Loved it. But I think they're done. I think the Hawks are going to finish him off. And I'll tell you what I'm calling it right now. Atlanta might beat Philadelphia in the next round. <laughs> if they don't beat him, it's going to be a series. They ain't going to get swept. They're going to win at least two. I'll put money on that. Mills. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. But my trending up, trending down, definitely trending down is the Mavericks. Um, injuries, that's what this whole playoffs are, is injuries. Um, Luka getting hurt, they, they have no chance. It's over. That was the best thing that ever happened for the Clippers. When they saw a chink in the armor of Luka, it was over. The whole team was demoralized. They're done. And they, they they can't do it. That's how big Luka, and Luka might be, he might be my favorite player in the league right now. If not, he's one of the top two or three in my in my my favorites. Um, yeah, Luca's that dude. Luca is that dude, but he's hurt, and Clippers know he's hurt, and they ain't no scrubs. The Clippers, they're my trending up. They're my trending up. I got the Clippers winning the whole West. I got them going to the Western Conference. I got them going to the NBA Finals now, and. I'm not surprised by that. Like I said, when I first made my predictions, I was based on everybody staying healthy. I beat the Lakers. I said if injuries happened at any point for the Lakers, it was going to be the Clippers. I mean, who else would it be? Who else would you have confidence in but the Clippers? Clippers or Lakers? I mean, really? So, Clippers, yeah, y'all on your way to the finals because y'all play Denver next. You'll smack them. That ain't nothing. <laughs> that ain't nothing. Um... So, it is what it is. Clippers, Clippers are there, whatever. But um, in the other series, I think I think. Let me hear this. This is my fact or fiction. Fact or fiction. The Bucks versus the Nets is really the NBA Finals. Fact or fiction. The Bucks versus the Nets is the NBA Finals. I'm saying fact. I think the winner of this series will win the NBA championship. Because I think the winner of this series will destroy Philadelphia if they beat the Hawks. Because I think their teams are just way better. And feel, like I said, with Joel Embiid being hurt all the time, I can't see it. And in the West, even if it is Kawhi and Paul George, do I trust that? Do I trust Paul George and Kawhi to go against, go against the three-headed monster in the Nets? They better pray to that thing. They, they better pray is the Bucks. Not, and I'm not saying they're gonna beat the Bucks, but I'm just saying they might be able to match up better with them. But you know what I really hope happens? Here's my here's my hope. Here's my hope right here. If we lose to if we lose to Phoenix, which we definitely possibly could, and I want mine because I want I, I would want Phoenix to win the West. I want them to play the Clippers in the Western Conference Finals. How great would this poetic justice be for Chris Paul? Who had to deal with injuries and letdowns and everything as a Clipper to go to the Western Conference Finals and beat the Clippers to get to the NBA Finals? If we lose, that's the storyline I want it to happen. That'd be the storyline that I would want to happen. And to make it even better, nah, I ain't gonna make it all crazy. I was gonna say they could play Philadelphia in the finals with Doc Rivers. Nah. But I would I want the winner of the Lakers Suns to make it to the finals. So um fact or fiction, let me know what y'all think about that. I know we talked about a lot of different things. Coach K's gone. Playoffs, who's gonna win? I'm gonna go check out the games right now. 
Give me some feedback. Let me know if y'all agree or disagree with what I said about the AFC quarterbacks, the fantasy quarterbacks, um, and, and everything else. All right? Thank y'all for checking out. Realism Sports Talk. Appreciate it.